What could this DeWalt thickness planer possibly have to do with the smart station going cordless? Well, if you want to find out the answer to that question, you'll have to stick around. I promise I'll answer it in a few minutes. I recently published a video called Pulling the Plug on the Smart Wood Shop. That video has had more than 50,000 views, over 700 thumbs up, and 100 comments. A lot of interest. I'll link that video right here if you want to go check it out. So many great suggestions in the comments from the SmartFam Brain Trust. Ideas on how I could pull going cordless off, including some recommendations for power banks, two of which look like they might do the job. There were a few comments and suggestions that revealed to me I needed to step back and clarify the number one purpose of that video of what I'm trying to do. If you'd like to get yourself a detailed set of plans to build any of the smart tools for yourself, like the smart bench, the smart station, the smart cart that makes them all mobile, or any of the accessories that work with the system, like the router table, the crosscut jig, the panel rig, the cradles. There are so many tools that make up the system. Or the smart wood shop itself, there'll be a link in the description of this video down below where you can go and purchase any of the plans or packages of plans and download them instantaneously 24-7, 365. The goal that I'm trying to achieve is to make the smart station cordless. I have everything on board mobile, all of the power tools that I need to use, the vacuum system, everything is on wheels and completely housed on the smart station. But there's one cord running from the dust collection, the Festool vacuum, to the wall, and then all the other tools are plugged into it. So when those tools are activated, they activate the dust collection to keep it all clean and obviously that provides power to everything. So I have that one cord and I want to eliminate that by bringing the power on board the smart station. Some of the great comments were get a lightning pickup truck. You can just plug right into it and you have all the power you need. Another one was to build out a big battery system and solar system in the smart wood shop and then plug into that. Those are great ideas, but they're not the problem that I'm trying to solve or the improvement I'm trying to make. I want to make the smart station cordless. Power isn't the issue, it's mobility. I think I introduced the confusion when I said in addition to going cordless, with the smart station, I want it to also be able to run the smart wood shop and to be able to use it to run my home when the power goes out. The power goes out so infrequently here that I don't feel it is a good investment to put resources in a dedicated system at home to power it for the few hours that we lose a year. But if I had a battery bank that I could plug in and have lights, charge some batteries, maybe run the refrigerator, and just make life continue on conveniently while the power is out, then that would be a great bonus. So those things are bonuses, not really what I'm trying to do here. I also mentioned that I wanted the battery bank to be able to accept a lot of wattage from solar to recharge. But again, that was a secondary thing I don't plan on putting any solar on the smart wood shop. That is for home. I'm going to have solar on my roof there to run the house. And if it could charge the battery up at the same time, again, when power is out and it's plugged in, that would be a perk, a bonus, but not something that I'm trying to achieve primarily. To be crystal clear, the purpose is to make the smart station cordless. I also received many suggestions about changing all of the tools to cordless tools, to battery operated tools. Again, I wasn't looking to do that. That's not an option for me for many reasons. First off, I already have a quiver of great tools that I love working with. 
and they do an incredible job. I've had this miter saw for going on 14 years and it works as good today as the day I got it. I love this saw and its cordless cousin doesn't quite have the capacity that this does and I just don't need a new one. My table saw is a saw stop. There is no cordless saw stop table saw. There's a lot of great little table saws out there, including Festools, which I really like, but it's not an option for me because if the table saw does not have the break, then it's not an option for me. So my table saw at this point in time has no option to go to a cordless or battery version. My router's a big three and a half horsepower, and there's probably companies out there that make big heavy routers that are cordless, but again, I have two that work great and I have no reason to replace them. And then my other benchtop tools, my sander, my Craig jig, again, they work great and I just don't need to go to another tool that introduces more batteries. So I would have a big expense to making the individual tools cordless and I couldn't do it 100%. So then I would need to have some cordless and some corded. Definitely when it comes to my hand tools, I will do everything I can. I'll go out of my way to get a cordless version if it's available. But for my bench tools, there's just really no benefit for me to go to a battery version for most of them. So now it's crystal clear. The purpose of this is to make the smart station with the tools I have cordless. That will require a power bank. What are the demands for that power bank? Number one, I've got to be able to put it on board with the smart station. If I can't put it there, then again, I won't be cordless. I'll have a power bank that I'll have to plug into and I'll still have a cord. So there's physical size limitations. I made those clear in the last video. There's plenty of options that will fit. It needs to be able to power these tools two at a time, any two, the vacuum plus one for startup demand and continuous run demand. And I said I wanted it to run all day so I don't have to worry about conserving power or plugging it in during the day. The question is how many hours do these tools run in a day? When I've got the miter saw, I turn it on so there's that startup demand every single time, but then the cut just lasts a few seconds and then it's off. So I can't imagine the miter saw, even running all day long, would total more than probably an hour or less. The table saw would have fewer startups and a little more time, but still it's a rip, a cross cut, and then it's off. The router tables are going to be running one at a time. They run a lot less, but again, like the table saw, similar demands. So let's say a hard day running, all the tools added up, the time they're actually on and drawing power. Even if it were four hours, that's probably long, four hours, but so say four hours of actual using electricity. So it isn't like a 10 hour day of just the table saw running the entire day. If anything, it'll be a higher demand on that startup draw because you know that all tools, when you turn them on, they have that initial demand and then it settles down the longer it runs. So that does lower the total wattage it needs to be, but I still want it to be comfortable so that I don't have to think about it. I also want to be able to plug it into a wall and it charge fairly fast. If it takes days to get it back up to charge, that wouldn't do me much good. If it charged overnight to full, which I think most would do that, that would be okay, but I would like it to take on a charge initially and bring it back up quite a bit. Just in case, during a work day, I do notice that the power's down a bit. If I take a break, say lunch, I could plug it in and get a nice charge to freshen it back up which again, may lower the demand on the total 
wattage that it needs to be or the endurance that it has. I'm not trying to minimize it. I still want to maximize that because I want to use it for home if possible. So then it wouldn't be mission critical for running the Smart Station for the entire day. And like all of my tools, I want it to be simple and quick to set up and use. I don't want a multi-piece thing that I got to stack blocks and plug things in. Again, that would be for home, a permanent system. In fact, the additional wattage that I'd want to add, I could do that in banks at home. And then when I bring the main bank in, plug it in then, again, for power outages, that'd be fine. For the smart station, not so much. The construction needs to be construction worthy. I'm going to be hauling it around. I'm going to be putting it on the cart. It's going to get dust on it. So I want it to be able to stand up under construction use. And finally, I have to be able to move the power bank from the smart wood shop to the smart station all by myself, which is what the DeWalt thickness planer has to do with all of this. This planer weighs 105 pounds, and I have to pick it up and carry it from the smart wood shop and put it on the bench. It's not fun, but I've been doing it for a couple of decades now, and I just did it again today. I think I can handle that. What I'm finding out is the power banks that seem like they'll meet my needs are about 115 pounds, 10 pounds more than this planer. But they all have wheels or a cart that you can roll them out with a handle. So I could have a space in the smart wood shop. In fact, let's go in there and take a look. My plan is to put the power bank right here on the floor where the sawhorses are currently stored. Right now I have this smaller power bank from DJI and I've built the box and mounted it here. And this has been great. I put a little lip on here and this holds the sawhorse in place. My plan is to sort of invert this and to create a shelf that would be above the power bank that the sawhorses would sit on top of. And then I could just roll the power bank in, put it in a spot and then plug the smart wood shop into it. And then I'd have lights charging the batteries and the smart. In fact, the power bank should be large enough to even run the compressor. I'd have that secondary benefit of being able to run the smart wood shop off of that single battery bank and not need to carry this one along as well. When a job starts and I'm there to lay out the site for excavation, get ready for foundations and all of those kind of things, the smart wood shop would be there but I would not be setting up the finish tools. I'd be using the framing and rough carpentry tools and I'd have plenty of power to run the smart wood shop off of that if I needed. Most of the time, one of the first things I do when I start a new job is I call my electrician. He gets a temp permit. We put a temp pole on and we have temp power as one of the very first things we do when we start a job. But there are situations where maybe it would be a bit far to run my cord or I would rather have the smart wood shop a little further off and it's just not high demand on power because all of my demo tools and all of my framing tools, they're all cordless. So I just need to charge batteries to keep them running. I don't really need to run cords to any of those. So at this point, with the help of the Smart Fan Brain Trust, I've identified two power banks that I believe will meet all of my needs. One is the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3, I believe, and the other one is a Goal Zero. And I'll put links to both of those in the description of the video down below. And if any other Smart Woodshop Fan Brain Trust have some ideas for a power bank that is very similar to those two because it meets the criteria for size and weight and also, I believe, output. But again, I've, I've got some more calculations and figuring to do to make sure that the startup power is there for the tools that I'm using. If any of the SmartFam have some other suggestions that meet the criteria that 
Those two, meet, being in size and weight, they're a single unit. They also seem to be very durable for outdoor use. They're even, I think, able to get wet to some degree. Be sure to post the brand and the model, better yet, even a link if you have it, in the description down below. Join in and let's go cordless together. Mahalo.